God can use anyone and anything to accomplish his divine purposes. Just as he did Belshazzar. Just as Belshazzar was reveling in the wine and everything associated with sin, God used him to what? Make a statement. Make a purpose. The ability to interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve difficult problems. Call for Daniel, and he will tell you what the writing means. So Daniel brought before the king, and the king said to him, Are you Daniel, one of the exiles my father the king brought from Judah? I have heard that the spirit of the gods is in you, and that you have insight, intelligence, and outstanding wisdom. The wise men and enchanters were brought before me to read this writing and tell me what it means, but they could not explain it. Now I've heard that you are able to give interpretations and to solve difficult problems. If you can read this writing and tell me what it means, you will be clothed in purple, have a gold chain placed around your neck, and you will be made the third highest ruler in the kingdom. And Daniel answered the king, You may keep your gifts for yourself, give your rewards to someone else. Nevertheless, I will read the writing for the king and tell him what it means. 18. Your majesty, the most high God, gave your father, Nebuchadnezzar, sovereignty and greatness and glory and splendor. Because of the high position he gave him, all the nations and peoples of every language dreaded and feared him. Those the king wanted to put to death, he put to death. Those he wanted to spare, he spared. And those he wanted to promote, he promoted. And those he wanted to humble, he humbled. But when his heart became arrogant and hardened with pride, he was deposed from his royal throne and stripped of his glory. He was driven away from people and given the mind of an animal. He lived with the wild donkeys and ate grass like the ox, and his body was drenched with dew of heaven until he acknowledged that the Most High God is sovereign over all kingdoms on earth and sets over them any way it wishes. Folks, that <clears throat> is proof positive that Belshazzar knew years, years that what he was doing now was what? Totally outside of God's way. Closing with 22. You, Belshazzar, his son, have not humbled yourself, though you knew all this. Instead, you've set yourself up against the Lord of heaven. You had the goblets from his temple brought to you, and you and your nobles, your wives, and your concubines drank wine from them. You praised the gods of silver, gold, bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which cannot see or hear or understand. But you did not honor the God who holds in his hand your life and all your ways. Therefore, he sent the hand that wrote the inscription. And what was that inscription that we have all heard? Mena, mena, tekel parson. Here's what these words mean. Mena, God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. Tekel, you have weighed on the scales and found wanted. For saying, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persian. Then at Belshazzar's command, Daniel was clothed in purple, a gold chain was placed around his neck, and he was proclaimed the third highest ruler. That very night, Belshazzar, king of the Babylonians, was slain, and Darius the Mede took over the kingdom at the age of 62. What jumps out at any of you in that short story? Thoughts. Pride. Whoop. Pride. And what about that very night, Belshazzar, king of the Babylonians, was slain. That same night, when he got the sermon 
That same night, he was slain. Okay? Justice in that particular incident was what? Swift. Chris. Thank you for sharing that his wife came in. She remembered when he did not, right? We got pride. We got swift. We got wife helping. I'm still digging for one more biggie about Belshazzar in this story. Somebody help me. Yeah. Joel. We are live stream, so can you talk closer to the mic, please? So... Thank you, brother. Was this the, uh, the famous Eric modem and r router? Thank you for doing that. Okay, over here. There's no wrong answer here. Just give it to me. But I do notice that it wasn't like a lot of times. There was no opportunity for him to repent and change his life. It was, he just went right to it and convicted him of his I submit to you the urgency of obeying what the Lord has put out there. We need to get a grip on urgency. We sometimes are a little sluggish in doing that. I think this is, you're, you're heading into where my last point was on the ones y'all haven't covered yet. I think Belshazzar was one of the most arrogant people that I've read about in the Bible. He's got a whole lineage back here with how Nebuchadnezzar, I'm not going to call him his father, but Nebuchadnezzar was slopping the hogs and digging in the mud, living like a wild animal, and this kid, this Belshazzar, at least if he didn't see it, he heard about it. That would be enough to keep me pretty focused for quite a while. Okay? I mean, I was a country boy with nasty hogs and cleaning up dairy farm cattle, milking dairy cattle. That's not fun. But to live in it, there is a significant emotional event that sets up in your life, I think. And yet, here comes Belshazzar, arrogant, full of pride, got some sure, swift decision on death, and as Chris said, hey, what are you doing? Wake up, okay? What does that tell us? And then, yes, this is in the Old Testament, I get it. But that's for our edification of being made aware more than ever, we need to look and stop sinning. We need to get a grip on the fact that there is a judgment day coming. It may not be on fast timeline like happened to Belshazzar, but this is one of those significant emotional events that we ought to pay attention to. And I think that's why the handwriting on the wall comes up. Because if we keep going and going, and when we become arrogant and we forget about our God, oh, beware, beware. It may not be swift as it is here, but there's that judgment that's coming. Okay? I want us to remember 
God can use anyone and anything to accomplish his divine purposes. Just as he did Belshazzar. Just as Belshazzar was reveling in the wine and everything associated with sin, God used him to what? Make a statement. Make a purpose. Jerry. Well, the Bible is replete with uh, people losing their memory about what happened in the past. It's over and over and over again that uh, just like the Jewish people said, uh, oh, okay, we are repent now, Father, please uh, bring us out of this problem. And then the next thing you know, they're right back in it again. And, and just, I mean, even today, we do not pay attention to history. History is a great teacher, but we do not look at it and, and even give it a, a shot because we're, it's happening again and again. And again. Yep. God is patient with those who have a heart for him. Even Nebuchadnezzar, remember, God waited one year. Yes, Eric. I was just going to say, I think there's also a comparison here because you've got um, Belshazzar who is greedy and arrogant and everything, and then Daniel says, I don't want any of your stuff. So I think looking at the two in this story also is a nice comparison. A good comparison, absolutely. Thank you. You got one? Go. Also, um, Daniel may not have been actually willing to take the, uh, the gifts, but it was put on him. I think, again, note. another example of arrogance. And wait a minute, I'm the king. I'm telling you, I'm putting this stuff on you. That lives my bullet up there now that talks about, oh, beware, careful here, followers of Christ in North Tampa. Let's stay away from testing God. Amen? Amen? Here's old Nebuchadnezzar out there. Again, his whole background. And now comes his son. And all they're doing, I think, is flaunting it in God's face. You don't matter. Don't test God. Believe in God's ability to do anything and trust that he will do what is best. Look what he did for the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The God we serve is able to save us, but even he does not. Yes, Paul. You know, it just hit me something here. Maybe you said something that made me think of it. Okay. Uh, uh, doesn't, it, doesn't it say something that, that he was willing to speak up to the most powerful man both times to his father and to the son he was able to speak up without fear and say things that they didn't want to hear really okay okay but he said it anyway i mean that that says a lot about his faith there doesn't it and he was um, able to speak up we think he was a little fearful, perhaps? Probably, I would be. That was a powerful man on, in, the, in the realm. Yep, yep, okay. I think that tells us that we shouldn't shrink away from speaking to people. I found this over in Jeremiah 25 and 8, and it's... it's even Nebuchadnezzar was an instrument of God's education and example setting. Jeremiah 25, 8. Therefore, the Lord Almighty says this, Because you have not listened to my words, I will summon all the peoples of the north and my servant Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and I will bring them against this land and its inhabitants against all and the surrounding nations. Nebuchadnezzar died and Belshazzar became king. God spoke where? 
through Daniel. And this is the bottom line, I believe, on that Jeremiah lesson learned. Are each of us actively thinking of a way, multiple ways, that God is using us? I submit that we probably don't do enough of that. How can God use us like he used Daniel? And then, when he does use us, are we willing to take the stand in the face of what may not be popular? Handwriting on the wall reflects right back at us. Are we spending time in prayer, in communication with our life groups, in communication with our family? How do you think God can use us to grow his kingdom in this place? That's a huge, big deal. After we see everything that's happened in Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, Shar and Belshazzar, all that. What are we doing about it? Are we thinking? Are we praying? Are we planning? Are we purposing? What does God want to use me for? You're probably going to hear a little bit more about it this morning, but I'm going to give you an intro to it. There was an event that happened in this building this week where a man who was here got used in a way that he never dreamed of being used. And it's a delightful story. But we never know when God's going to put people in our path for a purpose. And all I'm asking us to do is to give it a chance that we respond like Daniel did. If it's hard, step into it. Because pretty much God has made it happen so that you can be an influence. This is a fact here that I find just to be crazy good. Remember I talked about the arrogance? Take a look at these little factoids about ancient Babylon. 14 miles square, the Euphrates River bisected it. The inner walls around that city were 350 feet high and 87 feet thick, wide enough for two four-horse chariots. Walls lined the river on either side. 250 watchtowers, 100 feet higher than the wall. Outside wall had a deep water, moat 30 feet wide. This is a killer. Food was stored there that could last for 20 years. The bridge, 660 feet long, 30 feet wide, across the Euphrates River. And this is the ultimate arrogance right here. Can anything stop us from partying? Shame, shame, shame on Belshazzar. Shame, shame, shame on us. When we become impenetrable in our hearts, in our actions, shame, shame. The handwriting is on the wall that we are at God's mercy. We need to wake up and take a look at what's gone on before us so that we can be better as we go forward. We are never off the record. Someone is always watching us. And we're not for show we're not trying to make a big deal, but we are never off the record because God is here.
and he is in control. And I just suggest that here Babylon began to think they were impenetrable, and look what happened. In the one night, their king was dead. I hope that sinks in. This is a mistake board that I hope we do not have to have played out. The prince of Baal, Belshazzar, brought out the best gold, had all the parties going on. He was a heathen. Instead of glorifying God, they brought out all these things and they glorified iron and stone and gold. Well, in a different way, sometimes we don't give God the honor because we become idols of. Name it. Whatever is taking your time away from God becomes an idol if you allow it to take over your life. Cars and trucks, my idol, my God, help me, love, love, love trucks. And it, it's, it's that simple. If I spend all my time around my vehicles, that is taking my time away from God. Okay? Baseball, same thing. Short footnote. By the way, let me know how time's going. I've, I'm, I know I'm, I hadn't looked at it, and I don't intend to. Monty, you can cut me off when it gets on your nickel. Footnote. Crisis in my life was the Tampa Bay Rays were in the baseball playoff. And Cindy and I had six tickets to the playoff game. And we were asking... Anybody need any tickets? And one of my brothers suggested, well, you know, that ticket you paid $54 for is probably going to be worth about $800. And I went, yeah, it could be. Point crisis. Oops. This weekend, Stacy Myers had arranged for a uh, youth minister candidate to come spend the weekend interviewing and having dinner with the elders and our wives and that was happening on exactly the same night as the race playoff game well i'm telling you i was in a crisis man i'm thinking <laughs> hey uh i need to go to the ball games and stacy said it's the only weekend we can get everybody together and here i am cindy you go you represent i need to go to the ball game Hey, Chris, can we change the date? You know, just all over the map. And yet, who got the stew beat out of them in their games up in Cleveland? The Rays lost. Jerry. God got it. That's what I'm telling you. So... Because I was so arrogant, I was even considering finding a way not to come participate in this weekend's activity. Those things can creep up on us so quickly. We need to pay attention, is what I'm, that whole story is about. Be aware that challenges that come to us, John Love, sometimes are there for a reason. And we need not to start finding excuses to run around what God's really putting in front of us. Help me with three minutes. Okay. So, big mistake. Don't mock God like these guys did. Okay? Let's look at, in the last seconds, the one that talks about I just threw that picture in there for y'all so you can see what I was talking about, the size. Here we go. Of the two takeaways you've already gotten about, watch out for your arrogance and be sure that you're letting your 
information that you have in front of you, let it help you become closer to God. I want to challenge us all that we need to be in a reality check that God is in control more than ever. And all this garbage that's going around in our country right now, our hope is that God and we and all of us understand that's a temporary. That's a Babylon situation. <clears throat> and somehow, somewhere, we need to choose to be controlled by the Spirit. Find ways to handle stress. Find ways to pray more fervently. Try to come closer to God. Allow God to be your source and my source of joy and happiness. Strive to be a learner. Look at what Belshazzar did not do. He refused to be a learner. His dad, his whole culture, everything, and he threw it in the breeze because he didn't allow the learning to take place from the experiences that he had seen and grown up with. And finally, never forget that God is always present. Always, always present. Let's not be a Belshazzar. Let's never mistake the long-suffering of God for indifference or the patience of God for ignorance. Mark it down. <clears throat> when something's on the wall <clears throat> or something's in God's Word, it's going to happen. Amen? You can count on it. It's sure justice. Never forget, God's in control. He cares about you. He cares about me. And I couldn't do this without ending with this. God's got it. And he's got you and me. So let's get on with being joyful and putting God first and finding ways to do what Daniel did. Let's dare to be Daniel. I love y'all. Have a great week. Thank you.